good stuff. Just an everyday morning thing for you. Just kind of like this. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Man. We're doing ball. There's a difference between when I'm obviously when I'm doing the pressures and when I'm coaching ball. So I was gonna say, like this setting is. I mean, when you're around coaches, I mean, does it bring out different things in coaches when you do these things? Well, I mean, that's just that's just me you know, when, I'm, when I'm coaching. So. Uh, that's pretty much uh, who I am when I'm talking about ball and, and uh, talking about you know, coaching and you know we're all very passionate about what we do. A lot of a lot of talk about culture up there too, but as you as you've been out and about since the season ended, whether it's talking to other coaches or whatever, are you starting to feel some of that um, that excitement around the program that, based on what we've just seen this season? Are you sensing that outside? Yeah, I am. I, I sense that. There's a lot of folks that are excited about Michigan State football right now, and, and um, I'm going to be hitting the road starting on Sunday on the recruiting trail, and, and uh, I anticipate there's going to be some buzz out there, and it's, it's, it's all uh, very positive. How do you balance what you want to do with the rest of this class um, in terms of high school guys versus the portal uh, you know, going into next month? Yeah, I mean, we're just going to get the best players that we can get that are available, and we're, we're in it on, on, some, on some guys, and we're going to have to compete and fight, and fight for them, and, and a, lot of these, a, lot, a lot of them is going to go all the way down to the, to the, to the wire, you know, all the way down to the end. And I know Tom talked about this with, on the basketball side, but do you, with the, the machinations of the portal, do you have to keep maybe a couple scholarships open in case someone comes available that, that you may not expect? Yeah, I mean, it's just the roster management has just gone to a whole new level. Um, you know, right now, and, uh, and so um, you know, we don't necessarily intentionally hold uh, uh, spots back just for the portal, but ultimately, it, um, you know, it, it, sometimes it works out that way. I know Nick was supposed to supposed to be here on after you. Would it have been kind of cool to have him here, have yeah. a little interaction with him up there? Yeah, I would, I would have liked the same coach. You know, obviously, he's he laid the foundation for me and, and, and coaching. And, Three of my first four years in the profession were with Coach Saban. And what was that like watching that game? I'm sure you watched the game Monday. Mm-hmm. You know him on one side and a lot of you know, guys you recruited on that Georgia team. What was what were the feelings like for you when you saw that? Game? Yeah, it was just uh, it was just you know very uh, it was just you know gratifying to see uh, you know both both programs out there competing to finish first and, and uh, you know I was really you know kind of pulling for. For both teams, and because obviously uh, you know, Coach Saban and, and I go way back, and, and, I, and I know some, you know, people on his staff, and I still got a, maybe a player or, or two. Um, you know, I, I think I had one player that I recruited was out there playing, and then um, and then got you know, all those you know, those kids at Georgia that I was able to you know, work with, and, you know, help help to recruit there, and, and all the staff at Georgia. So I was kind of just uh, knew it was going to be a good game and kind of pulling, pulling for both teams. No, I'm just, you know, I'm just really, uh, you know, this this coach profession is a very, um, it's a small world. And it's a very tight, tight knit group of coaches. And so ultimately, um, you know, I'm, I'm usually not pulling for teams, I'm pulling for for people that I know, I'm pulling for coaches and, and things like that, I'm pulling for players that, that I know. Uh, and so, uh, I mean, it's 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 um, it's very interesting, you know, when you you have intimate knowledge of you know, what's going on out there with the, with those teams. But I don't necessarily pull for one side of the ball or the other. You, you know, during the season, it was kind of, you know maybe not can't see the forest from the trees type of thing. You talked about you know you kind of evaluate the season when it's done. Is it now you've had a little time to reflect? Do you kind of have you know a sense of appreciation for what you were able to accomplish? Like you mentioned up there, two and five to eleven and two. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know, we we uh, I, I've reflected on that and and uh, I told I told the staff uh, you know at, at the at the at the bowl game um, in our last staff meeting before. The game. Um, but let me go back. People ask me before the season. I got a lot of questions about what what um, what will success look like for you for this team. And 
I, I said, you know, for us to, you know, reach our full potential. And, you know, people, I don't think necessarily want to hear that because it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's a cliche, but that's really, you know, I really meant that. And so and I told the staff in that last staff meeting, I, I said, guys, I, you know, first of all, I want to, you know, thank you everyone for all the efforts. And I know we got one more to, to go out here and get, but I really feel like that we got the most out of this particular team that we could get. I just, I, there's, there's not, we couldn't get, we haven't left anything, you know, on the table. Um, you know, they gave us everything they had, and we gave them everything we had, and I thought we got the most out of, out of this group. I thank them for that, and so that's how I feel about this, this, this team. Jalen, Kevin, some of the guys that made NFL decisions, but you got some guys going back. What did you think of Jaden and Xavier, Ronald, Jared? You know, getting these veterans back and what that does for you guys in 2022. Yeah, well, I, I think it's I think it's good. It's good for them, um, and so we've got more um, more work to do and more development, and, and um, you know, just get better marginal gains and, and keep working with them individually to get them better, and it's going to help us have a stronger team because, you know, these guys are experienced players, veteran players that understand our culture, and, and uh, they're going to be leaders for us and, and uh, you know, understand understand what it takes to uh, to compete at, at a really high level and, and to uh, to find a way to win, win games. Jeremy Bernard, new guy, can you speak to, about him and what he brings to you and how you were able to kind of secure him late with what happened with Washington? Yeah, well, he's a he's a he's a, a, a very good player. I mean, I, I believe that he's a player that can be a difference maker. Um, he's uh, really got he's got a really good combination of size and speed, and he's strong with the ball. I mean, he's he um, he's a uh, he's a guy that that uh, I feel like is going to fit well, um, you know, with our with our mix of guys, and that he's going to be a he's going to be a help us. Uh, you know, big time, obviously. You know, recruiting is fluid, and uh, you know it was, it's always it's always changing. And we were, we were uh, you know, lucky we were able to you know, we were able to get him get him here. And I'm really happy that he's here. We never got a chance after the Peach Bowl to ask you about Darius Snow playing safety. Mm -hmm. Now we played safety in the second half of the Ohio State game, but where does he have to be? And then obviously we play two positions now, but going into winter conditioning and so forth. How do you see Darius Snow? And, and uh, also uh, uh, gross and how that all shakes out. Yeah, we're, we're going to have to see, you know, we're going to, this side this of season, you know, obviously, you know, recruiting is a big part of it, and, and then the strength and conditioning and, you know, all the stuff we do, but um, we also do scheme evaluation, you know, offense, defense, especially as we go back and watch pretty much every play and we, you know, make an evaluation and see, like, hey, where do we need to improve? What did we do well, and then how can we how can we get better? And where do we need to innovate? And you know, and then you know, maybe study some other programs, study some pro teams, and you know, and, and, and do all that. And so as we do all, all those things, we're also evaluating not just the scheme but the players, and then and then uh, trying to decide uh, what direction we need to go uh, in for spring ball, and uh, and if there's any changes position change or anything like that and obviously communicate that with the player and just sit down and talk about it and see if we can figure it out and before we get started. How did Darius look at safety in that game? Yeah, I thought it looked good. Definitely was missing out to the next coach was the table. Yeah, uh Ephraim is a, he's a he's a really good role model, he's a good leader. Um, he's a he's got really good interpersonal skills and relates very well with the players. He's a, He's, uh, he's, I mean, he's a good coach. He's very knowledgeable. He's really, he's really smart. Um, you know, he, he knows, he knows a J system, you know, inside and out. Um, and I think he's going to be an excellent recruiter. Is that a strength to have somebody who's that young and actually also shows the ability to be a coach at this level? But then you know him, you've had him in the building. Mm -hmm. But also that youth on the staff, is that, is that a plus also? Yeah, we want to have diversity on the staff. You know, and, uh, and, you know, age, experience, things like that. And so, um, you know, I, I think he's going to be, you know, he's going to bring some energy. And, and uh, you know, he's a, he's, a, he's a dynamic 
He's a dynamic guy that, that uh, you know, he's, he's gonna he's gonna have he's gonna have some juice, you know, and that's that's important to have that on your staff. Any what, updates on the the final staff position you got to fill? They don't have anything right now. No, nothing official. What, with with Keon and Malik, um, can you kind of walk us through your conversations internally? To, to let them try basketball right now, with particularly if they're going to be significant contributors. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I told them that they want to play, that they can play, and the coach, you know, want to allow them on the team. And so I, I got no, I got no issue with that. And, um, you know, we knew Keon and we were doing the recruiting process. He wanted to play both, and and, uh, and actually, you know, Michigan State does have a history of you know, guys with football, football. Football guys on you know, scholarship to play, play basketball. I think <clears throat> going back to like Andre Rise, I think he played. And when I was here in, in 97, 98, Lorenzo Guest was on the staff. He he did both. So, and then, you know we had Adam Burkhorst who plays who plays baseball. So I've had guys in, in the past that you know, run track. You know, and, and so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm good with it. Just never an issue like with winter conditioning and stuff. Or I mean, obviously to, they're going to be working out with them. Yeah, you just have to coordinate. Yeah. You know, you've got to connect. You got to <clears throat> you got to do it. You know, you got to do a great job communicating and things like that. And, but you can you can work it out. You just got to communicate and, and just you know make sure that the players don't get caught in the middle. Do you, do you have any update on what you want to do with your schedule for the spring in terms of? I'd imagine you're in winter conditioning right now or starting soon. Do you know when you want to start spring practice? And yeah, I think we're going to put a we're going to put a schedule out. Uh, I think maybe sometime next week. Yeah, so uh, we got a pretty good idea. Yeah. So what's going on with what's next for the players right now? Winter conditioning bit? is it all academics right now? Or are they training or what, yeah. what is what is next? The next two weeks, three weeks, four weeks? Yeah, those guys will start, you know, in, in, with uh, Coach Novak and. and uh, you know, in, the, in the weight room, and then we'll just progress to the, to the uh, they'll be doing the lifting and then the running and, and we'll, the drill work and stuff like that, and you know, get guys in shape and ready for, for the spring. Does better conditioning like hit a different gear in a couple of weeks? Or it's right kind of it's progressive. Yeah, it just kind of it kind of ramps up, so that when we start spring ball, it's not a shock for those guys. So, um, you know, by the end of that that's that um, that winter conditioning program, that you know, Spartan training program. We know we, we use the, the sports science, the sports science. We use the, the GPS units and all that type of stuff. So we know what their loads need to be for a spring practice. Um, Cause we have historical data. We know what a spring practice is going to look like, and so um, we'll make sure that we get those guys up to that load and be able to handle that. So then we step into the spring. That's that spring practice. We can, we can hit the ground running. This weekend you'll have I think some recruits on campus. Look at the first time he's going to utilize basketball. Will they be able to go to the basketball game? Will it be the first time since the week you were hired that you to do this? It's, it's not. It's not the. It's not the first time, um, but uh, it won't be the first time since, since then. Because um, as you can remember, we had we had a, some official visits, um, and then there was a we had a we had a basketball game. Yeah, and so uh, but we had uh, those are those are those are those are good. Those are good because because. Um, Coach Izzo, you know, he loves football, right? And then um, the atmosphere in the Braves is, is is electric, and that that Izzo is like it's like phenomenal. And so when the players when they when they come here and they, they see that and, and they see like the student section and, and you know, all the green and white and, and everybody, you know, just just that that atmosphere and that energy and that passion. I mean, they can they can like translate that to man what if this is seventy five thousand people doing like this you know so it's, it's good. Uh, you know, so the new football building and the things that will be going up there is that something you're selling at this point? Do they visualize that or is that? Yeah, the expansion and, and renovation. Yeah, we we talk about that because we this is something that's real and uh, and hopefully uh, you know after spring ball we we'll get started on that. And, so we do talk about that because you know facilities it, it does um, it does demonstrate a commitment to excellence and, and so that's what we're all about. Can you give us an update by chance on Paris Crouch? Is he still uh, you know you guys? He yeah, he's on he's on demand. Yeah, he's on demand and and, uh, and uh, anticipate that he'll you know he gets healthy and then we'll, we'll get him ready for spring ball.
Also, as far as coaching staff goes, are you anticipating Harlan Barnett handling the entire secondary next year? Is that for sure? Yet? Yeah, he's 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 a secondary coach, and, and then I'm I'm gonna you know I'm gonna you know I'm gonna <laughs> pitch in you know, with the corners. How do you feel about that pitching in and helping Harlan? That dynamic, how that would be? I feel good about it. I feel really good. Yeah. Thanks, Bob. Appreciate it. Yep. Thank you for seeing it. Yes, sir. 